Hello, my name is Richard Tread. I'm the Managing Director of AXT. I'm pleased to open this introduction to this webinar conducted by AXT in collaboration with our partner Sigray. AXT is a dynamic distributor of high-tech instrumentation in Australia and New Zealand. We have a large product range covering microscopy, microanalysis, nanofabrication and nanotechnology. We pride ourselves in building strong partnerships with our customers and suppliers, bringing together the best in scientific innovation and research with cutting edge instrumentation and characterization. Truly unique tools to facilitate your research. This webinar is titled Chemical and Electronic State Determination Using Lab-Based X-ray Absorption Spectroscopy, XAS, and was presented by Dr. Wenbing Jung. Dr. Jung is a leading researcher in X-ray imaging, an innovator, a serial entrepreneur, an OSA fellow. He's over 60 issued patents on X-ray technology. From 2000 to 2013, he was the founder and CTO and president until 2009 of X-Radia, a company specializing in high resolution X-ray microscopy and X-ray optics. Under his leadership, the company was established as a worldwide leader in high performance microscopes and uh, profitably employed over 100 people in the Bay Area of San Francisco until it was acquired by Carl Zeiss uh, and it became the X-ray microscopy division. Post Zeiss acquisition, Dr. Jung started a company, Sigray, when its mission is to make accessible an entire portfolio of synchrotron analytical techniques to labs worldwide. Sigray's products include X-ray micro XRF, nano X-ray microscope, X-ray sources, X-ray optics, and the XS that we will discuss in this webinar. First of all, thank, uh, thanks everyone for taking time for this webinar. And uh, thanks Richard for the introduction. Richard I, and I have been back for many years working together. And uh, basically after acquisition of my first company and uh, I started the second company with Sylvia. And uh, so the new company, I think the first company was successful essentially bring what I was doing at Synchrotron to laboratory and the company uh, grow re reasonably well and it's IC is doing a great job, continue the rapid growth of the actual microscope. So my new, new company also want to do bring more capability from Synchrotron to the lab. Actually, until recently, I was we were focusing on two areas. One is actually microanalysis, essentially like uh, actual microprobe. Second one is quantum leap is bring actually absorption spectroscopy from synchrotron to the lab. So that's a part of our presentation today. Actually, we are also beginning to make actually microscopes. And um, my man competed with the Zeiss expired more than two years ago. So we are make, developing actually microscope, next generation actually microscopes. Uh, currently, uh, it's not going to be covered in today's webinar. Whoever interest obviously can reach out to uh, Richard and also reach uh, out to me. So let's talk about quantum leap. Uh, really, I think that the real, the system is bring actually absorption spectroscopy from synchrotron to lab. I hope to convince you by the end with a lot of uh, measurement results. And uh, so let's start. I think a lot of you probably know actually absorption spectroscopy might then work at synchrotron, but just briefly uh, introduce what is uh, uh, for people who have no much deeper knowledge and briefly go through some basic physics. So you have photon electron, uh, actually it's instant on uh, atom and you eject photon electrons. When actually energy above the absorption edge, uh, then the photon electron produced. So the photon electron, when leaving the atom, actually will be influenced by the neighbor atoms. So if you have a single scattering of the photon electron by neighbor, and usually you measure that, usually it's called extended actually absorption spect uh, spectroscopy. When it's near, scattered by multiple neighbor atoms that affect near edge absorption structure. So 
the first one is called uh, the near edge one called zines. There's other names, and there's exas or extended axial absorption structures. So measure the multiple near edge and the long range uh, actually absorption spectroscopy one can measure interatomic distance and for near edge you can get oxidation state to first order. So the next one slide you will see there is a near edge and actually XF and this one is particular to around uh, 11 keV and uh, you can see the terminology there, things and XF and uh, near edge XF and uh, XF. So basically you typically, this is a, the bottom is a, a, the horizontal axis actual energy and a vertical is how much you attenuate by uh, the atom of interest. So uh, there's near edge, you get oxidation state, for example, iron plus or two, plus or two, uh, two plus, three plus, or near uh, far edge XF region give you interatomic distance and the bonding and local structure is essentially local coordination number, how many nearby atoms uh, in the first show and the second show you can get from the XF spectrum. And one of the important feature if you look at the spectrum is that in the near edge region, the intensity fluctuation actually transmission changes rapidly and uh, so you need, in order to measure the spectrum, you need a very high energy resolution. Actually, because the, the change is rapid and large, and usually you don't need as much actually photons. So in this region, you need the high energy resolution, but not necessarily high actually flux. But the, for the XF region, the modulation or variation of intensity is changing much slower, but uh, the amplitude also is smaller. So in this region, you want to have a, you need to have a high actually flux to get enough statistics and to measure the variation. But on the other hand, you don't need a high energy resolution. So this is very important uh, to recognize in the system design and it's a fully taking advantage in you know, our system design, you will see later. So this slide is, uh, for example, showing the near edge for three different material. And as you can see, this is for metal and uh, iron oxide and nano uh, uh, particles, iron nanoparticle. And you can see the spectrums are fairly different. So by measure that, you can get chemical state. And another way is for manganese, you can see at lower energy, you can also get in uh, different uh, oxidation state, give you the different spectrum. So actually absorption spectroscopy give you the information about chemical state near edge. And uh, synchrotron beam lines at synchrotron facility, a lot of the beam, uh, experiment are actually done with the actually absorption spectroscopy. There's more publication probably for actually absorption spectroscopy and than any other measurement. A lot of them actually use in situ. For example, in this case, I just show a few in situ example cells and uh, one of the spectrum shown here is for uh, uh, sulfur absorption edge. And you can see the different uh, oxidation state of sulfur have different spectrum. And these are done in situ. Actually, in recent years, a lot of actually spectroscopy measurement are done in situ. So one of the uh, important characteristic for actually absorption spectroscopy is that you need a monochromatic x-rays, one way or another, either before the sample or after sample. So, Martin, if you want to come closer so you can see what it, my projection. So, uh, for example, laboratory actually source and you have an actually spectrum I'm showing you this here. And you use the Bragg equation. As you can notice that Bragg equation, uh, 
for given D spacing of the crystal and the angle, a uh, given angle, there are several wavelengths can satisfy Bragg equation. So it's very important for, uh, uh, as we see that previously, that only when you measure actually energy changes absor across absorption edge. So other absorption edge also can be reflected. Actually energy from in the incident beam can be reflected by crystal. So that can mess up the spectrum. And next slide, I will show the difference. For example, on the left, without harmonic, if you measure the absorption spectros uh, spectrum, it's like, look like that. And contrast, for example, on the right, a left axis is two, for example. But if you with a harmonic, presence of harmonic, the contrast can drop from two to one and one to half. Obviously, when you decrease contrast, you will have a, uh, the, you need a more signal, a longer exposure time, uh, data acquisition time to collect the spectrum. For example, next slide showing that for given signal to noise ratio, fine. And the K value on the bottom is the, how much second order or higher order harmonic present. For example, the first one is 3% and 0.5% uh, and uh, also 10%. Uh, As you can see that uh, exposure time can increase rapidly. And uh, with, uh, uh, when you have high uh, second order or higher order harmonic presence. So to deal with that, a synchrotron facility typically use a mirror. For example, this is a, one of the typical synchrotron absorption spectroscopy beamline and has a mirror and some has one, some have two. The major function of the mirror is to reject higher order harmonics. And uh, so, in laboratory system, also have a higher order harmonic, but let's talk about crystal spectrometer. And uh, conventional, uh, actually absorption system has been developed in the early, eight, seven, uh, early 80s and late 70s and before synchrotron. There are quite a few commercial systems was produced or research system produced. All are based on so-called rule and circle. Essentially you have a, uh, if a sample, if you have a source located at rule and circle and put it, place a crystal and uh, in the configuration shown, and uh, you get in that particular configuration, you get single wavelengths. But if you rotate the crystal, uh, sample and detector as shown, you can scan actual energy. The problem with the traditional, this approach is that when the, later on we will show that when the sample or the soul size is big, you need back reflection geometry. And uh, also the data acquisition is uh, sequential. You point by uh, point scan the extra energy you know, in order to collect uh, the spectrum. So actually because larger spot size of actually source, often the uh, sample to crystal distance is on the meter are uh, fairly large. And uh, the system, another thing is that uh, with larger crystals and uh, 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 with a larger source size, in order to get high energy resolution, you have to use high order reflection crystals and efficiency are very low. And uh, so for example, Rigaku might be the last company have a commercial system until about 10 years ago and take 20 hours or so to collect the spectrum and with a very powerful rotating anode source. Actually, they are never able to do Zing, and Zing requires sub-EV resolution. The traditional system have not able to do sub-EV resolution for Zing. So, uh, do have a, quite a few commercial systems in the early 80s sold, but right now not many are operational. I think it's only a handful are operational. The throughput are low. They only can do XF and they cannot do Zing. So one of the traditional, uh, the problem is associated with a traditional system is that, as you can see from this uh, calculation, 
and uh, crystal on the horizontal axis is black angle, the vertical axis is uh, a crystal energy resolution. Uh, as you can see that a high, high black angle, the energy resolution are fairly good, actually too good. For example, like a germanium 444 at 70 degrees or so, and energy resolving power is 0.06 EV. Uh, the reason people have to use high black angle is because larger source size I will talk about later. So, but if you use a higher angle black angle to get high energy resolution, the crystal efficiency is extremely low, order magnitude lower than uh, necessary. So that's uh, one of the fundamental problems with the traditional approach. And uh, another one is that when you go to like a germanium 444, and uh, high angle, higher order harmonic become even more severe problem. So traditional ma uh, many laboratory source system, you, they usually have to use very low electron acceleration voltage to strike on the target. As a consequence, usually the throughput are fairly low. So this is a summary of limitation of a conventional laboratory system and uh, uh, low energy resolution is efficient for things measurement and low system throughput due to several factors. One is source brightness alone, and another one is the diffraction, crystal diffraction efficiencies are very low, and as shown in the previous uh, slide. Another one is data acquisition and sequential. When you have a sequential measurement, actually the source stability and crystal and detector stability are extremely high. Otherwise that can mess up the spectrum. So what we are going to use in our system is to use a parallel detection instead of a sequential detection. So the all spectrum going to be measured simultaneously. So that avoids the sequential data acquisition problem. So there's two approach and for achieving parallel simultaneous uh, data acquisition. One is uh, called also line circle spectrometer on the left. And in this case, actually the sample is located within, not on the low line circle, but within the low line circle. And in this case also you need to have a, uh, either uh, spatial resolving detector placed at the Roland circle. By doing that, you can get simultaneously measurement of spectrum and uh, over fairly wide energy range. We will get more detail a little bit later. Another geometry is uh, one Hamel spectrometer. In this case, that crystal is a uh, band in the sagittal direction, and different the position of the uh, crystal reflect different energy and recorded by a position sensitive detector as shown. So these are two geometry going to be used in your system. The left, the off the line circle geometry with single crystal will be used for uh, near edge measurement to get high energy resolution. The one on the left, the off the line circle, uh, the von Hamel spectrometer will be used for XF measurement and uh, in this case, the von Hamel spectrometer provide much higher actually flux, but the energy resolving power is not good enough for near edge. In our system, actually, we have both. So we were able to measure extend XF uh, spectrum with the von Hamel geometry and uh, use the off low line circle spectrometer measure near edge. So we will combine the two spectrum and create a single spectrum to have a, uh, generate a very good spectrum for XF. For, if we just, uh, for uh, thing measurement, we will just use the off the line circle geometry. So that's the detail. So off the line circle geometry is explained in this view graph. So energy resolution is only depend on depending on the width of the analyzer and detector pixel. Actually, the width, WS, in this figure, really determine the spectral coverage. And uh, also the uh, WS is how far from the off-zone circle. 
L. And the next slide we are showing the our Johansson geometry of low line circle designed for 170 millimeter low line circle radius and detector pixel size 13 micron. So detail is a kind of might be confusing, but mainly is that by using smaller low line circle radius, which is 175 millimeter, which is a, we can use a short off the line circle distance to achieve large energy coverage. So that's very important to recognize that. That's our system. That's one of the unique design of our system. And uh, next slide showing that is, which we talked before is that you, for example, the curve showing the bracket angle on the uh, horizontal axis, the energy resolution on the vertical axis for several source sites. As you can see that if the source size is small, one can achieve a high energy resolution with the crystal, even at the low bracket angle. But source size at 100 micron, for example, many conventional sources like that, in order to get high energy resolution, you really have to get to a very high bracket angle. For example, in our one harmless geometry, we only need energy resolution like four or five EV for XF measurement. We can use like 30 micron, 40 micron at a uh, reasonable, reasonably low bracket angle, still get higher energy resolution. So next slide summarizes the two spectrometer advantage and disadvantage. Zola, uh, off Zola and circle single crystal or Johansson ge geometry uh, spectrometer can get very high energy resolution. For example, 0.5 EV, actually we can do 0.2 EV resolution and over finite bandwidth. And uh, energy resolution in independent of a source size. The weakness of uh, uh, off Zola and circle geometry is that for XF need much larger energy range and off the line circle geometry is not good for that. And also the flux are relatively low uh, for over wide energy range. Well, Hamos uh, mosaic crystal spectrometer on the other hand actually have, is complementary. Whatever weaker on the off the line circle geometry is stronger for one Hamos geometry. Actually their strengths and weakness just reverse. So our system actually can easily switch between the two modes. When we need high resolution for zinc measurement, we use off the line circle geometry. When we need to do XF with high flux, low energy resolution, we can do use a Warhammer's mosaic crystal uh, geometry. Actually, we can combine the two spectrum to get a very high energy resolution near the absorption edge and uh, high flux at far uh, XF region. So that's one of the important design characteristic. And uh, we, the system look more like uh, on the left, it's a little bit distorted and we have a actually source, we have a mirror lens and the mirror function we'll explain later and we have crystal analyzer, we just show one. Actually, we have multiple mirror lenses and uh, three mirror lenses typically and three crystal analyzer or sometimes even four crystal analyzer. So on the left, explain the mirror, function of the mirror. For example, we have a gold absorption target. A gold actually, uh, actually source with a gold target. And uh, there's one natural line produced by the X-ray source. And uh, after the, the mirror has two reflections, our optics have two mirror uh, reflections. The first mirror actually reduces the background by two, more than 10 times, the second order after one bounce. And second mirror reflect uh, reduced by 100 times. So it's very efficient to reduce the harmonic or system design and right curve already explained, actually we can achieve very high uh, harmonic rejection and uh, which is one of the major feature of our system. So we have a very good actually source 
and next slide explain the our source uh, uh, convert compared to a conventional source, which is uh, not microstructured and uniform target. And we use a diamond on the right, and uh, by microstructured diamond, we have much better thermal dissipation property because diamond has much higher superior thermal conductivity than even gold or uh, copper, which is uh, which has a high thermal conductivity of metals. So. One of the source is schematically shown here. Actually, it's a real source engineer design. And uh, the dimension of the source is uh, the diameter of the tube is about two and a half inch. And the length is about six inch, seven inches long. So it's a fairly small source. And uh, one of the things you see our source have a, there are two motor attached to the source. And one motor actually allowed to switch target. Another one actually changed when one area from one target area to another target area to extend the lifetime of the source. So the source has been tested. Some of the source run close to a year, reliably running. So we are very happy with the source. The brightness actually the source is brighter than the rotating anode. So the source also provide a very small beam, which enable one Hamel spectrometer to obtain high energy resolution and high flux at the uh, uh, low Bragg angles. And also, line circle crystal spectrometer provide high energy resolution uh, down to 0.3 eV and over 50 eV energy run, uh, energy band, which is uh, sufficient for things measurement for most cases. So one of the things we have patented also is that uh, on the figure shown here is that in the light blue or uh, yellow area, we use our single crystal uh, of low line circle spectrometer to measure that. We use XF of uh, Mohammed's geometry to measure the whole spectrum region from uh, cover the whole green area. And actually, in the light yellow area, the spectrum are normalized and uh, replaced by the single crystal spectrometer. So we have a very good spectrum over the whole energy region. So the system offers tremendous capability. And when it's a cover from 2 to 12 keV, Actually, many synchrotron beam light don't cover this energy range. Actually, fairly wide energy range for things at XF. Actually, in special cases, we might extend the energy range to 1.7 keV uh, cover silicon, a KH. And very fast, can a uh, few minutes can get uh, good spectrum for concentrated samples. And it's a very convenient for sample analysis condition we can do in situ, actually the illuminating the sample area is typically 100 microns, so you can do in situ in operando analysis. And I can do 1D or 2D mapping, and uh, can do high vacuum or ambient environment operation. And uh, later on, we're also trying to upgrade to reason instance, actually absorption spectroscopy measurement. So next one is the specification and SAR has source and mirrors. As you can see, there's three mirrors for this particular case. And there's crystal analyzer. We have multiple crystal analyzer can use. And also have a, a, a von Hamos spectrometer detector. And uh, data, data acquisition, we have a, a pretty good uh, simultaneous spectrum measurement between the two spectrum. And uh, these are specifications. This one has a little bit narrower energy range. And uh, that's both standard. And the editor, uh, we can get flux five times 10 to the fifth for change measurement and about 10 to the eighth per second for XF measurement. Uh, the beam sites are fairly small. In some cases, if it's absolutely necessary, we can make it even smaller than 0.1 millimeter. And uh, sample, uh, 
space around sample are fairly big, 30 millimeter before and after, and they can measure a very small amount of quantity of uh, material, 0.1 milligram we think can do, and get high energy resolution. So we set and also give you some spectrum measurement from the system. The next one is a quantum leap analysis near edge. And there's two lines of dot is from our system. And the uh, line is from synchrotron, the acquisition time uh, for our production system is scaled to about 15, uh, 19, minimum, uh, uh, and 19 minim minutes and at about 0.6 EV resolution. And next one is uh, the crystal and the conditions are shown there. There's a uh, iron foil, uh, iron three ox oxygen four sample and uh, different oxidation states, different material. As you can see, the spectrum are quite different. Measurement are in the tens of minutes level, and when it's five percent, took need about an hour or so. So this is another uh, vanadium uh, sample we run. Again, it's uh, in the uh, tens of minutes, 10, 20 minutes level, and uh, compare with what we measured, and uh, also showing the repeatability uh, between different measurements. And uh, again, this has, uh, I think this one particularly to uh, uh, sample commercially purchased and uh, one of the customer, they cannot give uh, their sample and so ask us to uh, buy commercial uh, uh, samples and we measure and they were pretty happy with the measurement. And this is a very low concentration sample. It's I think a 0.7% weight concentration of vanadium and took uh, several hours to measure. And we get the signature and uh, we expect probably with our new system and uh, we will do a fast measurement. But uh, essentially 1.5% uh, or a few on the percent level it would be uh, taking hours of measurement. And the next one is the uh, uh, XF of a vanadium foil from a recently measured and take about 20 minutes to measure the XF spectrum over a fairly large energy range. And uh, so those are the examples we have been doing. And uh, so we welcome to whoever interest send sample to us and uh, we do measurement. And I think uh, uh, that's the system is uh, we, the production system almost ready. A lot of measurement actually with our prototype system alpha system and our beta system is being commissioned and uh, could be ready in about months. So uh, that one can measure from a 2 keV up to 20, uh, 12 keV or so. And uh, so we said, I think uh, I want to thank everyone for taking time to listen to the webinar and uh, any questions I would be happy to answer. It switch. Richard, are you there? Yeah, I'm. I'm here. So I'll un I'll unmute everybody. Uh, so everybody, you're you're getting unmuted. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, if anyone has any questions, please. It doesn't seem like there is. No one's typed any up. So um, I'm not having much luck unmuting everybody. Actually, to be honest. <laughs> you see a lot of people unmuted. Yeah, I'm not the host. I think you have to. Um, Unmute them, not me. Okay. Oh, how do I unmute? No, yeah, we have no questions from James. Um, uh, the, um, Any questions at your end, Janet? I was wondering about the spatial resolution, sort of what size particles. I think you're talking about um, 100 micron or so, is that right? Yeah, the beam size illuminating 100 micron. 
So if you have smaller particle, probably you are, we are going to eliminate multiple particles then. Okay, right. And I had something else, but I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, I guess um, I've used a little eels a little bit on some of these smaller particles, but there's some talk that you get oxidation of iron when you use eels. Do you have a similar problem with the X-ray source of oxidizing, say, iron two to iron three? Yeah, we don't have a. Obviously, for that, might you want probably uh, have a, a, a vacuum or some include uh, protecting the sample from oxygen. We do. We can pump down to ten to minus six, and uh, the chamber, and uh, but the. How much oxidation depends on which sample. We have a sample, even oxide, for example, vanadium-5, even mm. air over extended time, just living in the lab. Because it's not a, a particle bombardment issue. Yeah, it's, a, it's not actually it's going to induce, I don't think we have enough actually to induce that. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Okay, I think that was all the questions I had. Thanks very much for the presentation. It's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Well, clearly thank, you much, thank you very much, Ren Ming, for your time and uh, those at SIGRAY who uh, helped put it together. And, and um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.